Hey guys, Brian the Cell Phone Guy here again. Today we're going to take a quick look at the settings menu on ES Chat. Now the settings menu is quite a complex thing and that's why we've got uh, a dedicated video to it. We're going to go through the menu on the Android phones, uh, which is considerably different than the menu on the Apple devices. And I think the reason for this is that in the world of ruggedized phones, Android is by far the most popular uh, operating system. <clears throat> because there are many, many ruggedized Android phones with specialized push-to-talk buttons. But as we all know, there's no such thing as a ruggedized iPhone. So let's just look at the Android settings for now. Uh, these will also, for the most part, apply to the Sonom XP 5S voice phone, with a few notable exceptions that I'll get into specifically when we come to them. So let's get started. If we go to, this, to the three dots up here and we push this and we choose Settings, this is going to take us into the settings menu. And like I say, there's quite a bit to talk about here. So let's just kind of go through these one to one. The first one is call priority. And that allows you to tell the phone what to do if a voice call and a radio call happen at the same time. Now, if you choose PTT as your priority, what will happen is if you are in a voice call, on the telephone and someone does a radio call to you, the radio call will override the telephone call. If you choose voice, then what will happen is if you're on a push to talk call and someone phones you, the phone call will override the push to talk call. Now, when you hang up the phone call, it reverts back to the push to talk call, but this just lets you know which one has priority. Next, we have foreground app on call. Now, this one's a little easier to demonstrate than to talk about. So here, let me show you what happens. If you have a phone and you have foreground app on call um, activated, what will happen is if the phone is on the home screen and someone does a PTT call to you, it automatically launches right into uh, the push to talk app. So you don't have to fumble around to find it. Now the next two we have here, activate D&D &D in silent mode and activate D&D &D in vibrate mode. What that means is, and first off, let's get into the difference between silent mode and vibrate mode. If you have your phone on vibrate, when a call comes in, you will get a vibration. If you have it on silent mode, nothing happens when you have a call come in. So D&D &D is do not disturb. So basically, if you're going into a meeting and you put this phone onto silent mode or vibrate mode, whichever one you had checked, if anybody tries to contact you while you're in that mode, they will get a message that says that you are unavailable. Start call with speakerphone. This is the option to choose whether or not you want to use the earpiece on the phone, like you were holding it up to the side of your head, or if you want everything to start on the speakerphone. Now, most people choose start it on the speakerphone because if you're in a noisy environment and you have the phone on your belt, you're going to want to hear a call coming in. Now, these next two kind of work as a pair as well. So disable on-screen PTT and use whole screen as PTT. Now, I'm going to show you what that does on this because, once again, this is easier to show than it is to uh, talk about. Now, for example, if you choose the first one, which is disable on-screen PTT, this portion of the button goes away. Now, this is important to realize that if you do this on a phone like this Samsung S8 that I'm showing you now, you won't be able to make push-to-talk calls because there is no secondary button. If you do this on a Sonom, you're going to have the push-to-talk button on the side and it's not going to be a problem. The second part is to use the entire screen as a PTT. So let me show you how that works. So we've gone into the menu on this Samsung S8 and we've chosen to use the entire screen as a PTT. So let me just show you how this works. So if we choose the Sonom XP8, the push to talk button lights up. So we touch that and now we have an active call going with the XP8. Now the second part of this is when you make your second call, you can touch anywhere on the screen and it'll activate the push to talk. But it's important to realize that the very first time that you initiate this call, you have to use this button down here. Otherwise you can't start the call. Now the next selection here is hide tabs. 
And this again, just like disabling the on-screen push to talk gives you a bigger screen, this also gives you a bigger screen. So if I hide the tabs, let me show you what happens. Up here across the top, the individual tabs, which were for individual calls, group calls, text messaging, mapping, and history, have been taken off the screen. And basically what this does is it gives you a larger screen to work with. Push to talk toggle is the next one. This one's kind of interesting because in a normal mode, what happens is if you want to make a call on the radio side, you push the button and you hold it while you continue to talk and then you release it, which allows the channel to open up and let the other person respond. If you had a situation where you were, let's say, talking to a supervisor and you needed to explain a long situation as to what you were doing, but you needed both hands to do the function, if you use the push to talk toggle button, it becomes an on off switch. So the first time that you push the button, the channel is now open and the channel stays open for as long as you need until you push the button again. So it allows you to have both hands free to do what you're doing while you're maintaining a conversation. The downside is because you've got the channel open, the other person can't respond to you until you close the channel. Notify for all missed calls. This is an interesting feature because if you had the app running in the background and you were doing something else with the phone, say sending a text message or viewing a document or something, if the app is hidden in the background, this is just going to send you a notification that uh, lets you know that you have uh, missed a call or a message of some kind. Now the next one down is miss call endless alert. Uh, normally what would happen when you send an alert to a person um, and you want that alert to go off long enough for them to hear the phone and be able to respond to you. Uh, at some point, this is going to become annoying. But if the person was, say, out of the truck, for example, and they uh, didn't get back into the, into the truck for a few minutes, if you turn this on, basically the alert tone will continue to chime on a regular basis until the person answers the phone or until their battery goes dead. Alert call ring time, like it says, is the time in seconds that the phone will ring when receiving an alert call. Now, if you touch that, there's your choices, uh, 15, 20, 30, 45, 60, or unlimited. So you just pick the one that you feel is most appropriate uh, for you. Notification for all new messages means that you're gonna get a notification on the screen every time you get a new message or a new call that you've missed. And the same with uh, new message alert and the new message alert time is the same thing. This is the time that you set uh, when a new call is received. And once again, you can set the, uh, the number of uh, rings that you get. Now, the next couple that we have here are enable surveillance call and surveillance call brightness. There's, there's actually enough to talk about on the whole concept of surveillance calling that uh, we should probably do an entire video on this. But essentially, let's just take a brief look at it here. A surveillance call primarily is used by law enforcement. So it's sometimes important um, in when you're on surveillance that your screen doesn't light up to the uh, full brightness of the screen because that's going to give away your position or identify you as someone who is on the phone. So if you turn this on, and you have to turn on both of them because if you turn on enable surveillance call, it allows you to set the brightness. Now, I'm just going to show you how this works. So if we take this Sonom XP5S, and this one currently has both of those features checked, the brightness on the normal screen is set at 100%. But if we make a surveillance call to it, watch what happens to the brightness of the screen. So as soon as the surveillance call is in effect, the screen goes dark. Now you can set this, right now I've got it running at about 10%. You can set the brightness of the screen so that it doesn't distract. In the same way that you can turn down the volume for the audible distraction, you can turn down the brightness for the visual distraction. And then as soon as you end the surveillance call, the uh, normal screen returns. 
Now, default callee, this is handy if you have a crew that's out working and they're always gonna be talking to the same supervisor, or you have a supervisor who's only gonna be talking to his crew, you can set this. And what it basically allows you to do is, as soon as you push the push to talk button, you are communicating with the group that you have chosen to be your default setting. So it saves you the hassle of going through the individual call list and deciding who you wanna call. It's predetermined, and this can be changed at any time. And the last two that we have here are the default sound profile and the headset sound profile. These are identical menus, but they act differently. If you have the headset on, whether it's a Bluetooth headset or a wired surveillance headset or a lapel mic, it'll act the way that you have uh, set for the profile. So a profile is a group of settings that uh, you set once. And then when you select that profile, it allows all the settings that you have set to uh, take effect. So if we open up one of these menus, you're gonna see just how many things there are here. Things like call volume, volume boost, the ring tones, uh, the grant tones, the vibration tones. There's quite a bit to this, but suffice it to say that this is just a group of settings that you can choose that'll make uh, it easier to uh, determine what your phone is gonna act like when it's either on the sound profile or it's on the headset profile. So basically that's an overall look at the settings menu on the Sonom. Like say we've, uh, that'll work for any of the Sonom products or any of the Samsung products. It's uh, a little bit different on the uh, Sonom XP5S because it's a voice phone. So things like uh, make the on-screen push to talk disappear doesn't apply to the XP5S because it doesn't have an on-screen push to talk. But that's a general overview of the settings. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, just put them in the notes section and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe uh, so you'll get the future videos as they come up. Thanks for watching.